Hi everyone, Knoopsy here. A lot of you know I'm a really big fan of the iPad Pro. I've used different models of the Pro for over five years now, and it's been quite a journey. So in this video, I'll be talking about my long-term experience with the iPad Pro, as well as how my usage of this device has changed as the iPad has changed over the last five years. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare, the platform to learn all the creative skills you've always been interested in learning. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description get a one month free trial of Skillshare Premium, so you can explore your creativity today. Okay, so when the original iPad Pro first dropped, it was honestly a dream come true. After months of leaks, we finally got it. 12.9 inch display, ultra thin, powerful, multitasking, Kinda. Smart keyboard, Apple Pencil. It was the iPad we all wanted. And I was really excited to start using it in my daily life, but that didn't really happen. Mainly because there wasn't really too much I could actually do on the original iPad Pro. Multitasking was very limited as I mentioned. There was a lightning port and no USB-C, the Apple Pencil didn't have anywhere to dock, charging it was a pain, and finishing up my last year of high school, I didn't really know what to do with this huge tablet. I mean, I was watching YouTube on it and drawing stuff occasionally, but even that wasn't a good experience because the latency was super high between the pencil and the iPad. But the biggest problem was there weren't many apps took advantage of the large screen of the iPad, and multitasking worked for very few apps, mainly just Apple apps, and that's it. Then the beta iOS 11 dropped, which was kind of a big deal for the iPad. One of the first updates that actually changed the experience from just a blown up iPhone OS into a much more usable platform on this device. We got a files app, new dock, drag and drop, updated multitasking, and a bunch of other things that made it clear that the iPad was going to be a big deal for Apple. And with this update, testing out the beta, I started using this iPad quite frequently for my first year in college. And I started bringing this combo to school instead of my laptop. I use it to type out notes, draw, handwrite, work on keynote presentations, and start to become a much more useful device for me personally. But over time, once again, I started to hit the limits with this tablet. Sending files to people was a challenge. A lot of websites didn't work that well on the iPad, including my own college website, and still doing more than one thing was not easy on this device. Multitasking was still kind of weak. As well as the physical nature of this iPad, the original 12.9 inch iPad was a massive tablet, plus the original kind of clumsy smart keyboard attached to it, and it was just a lot to bring around every single day and I just kind of switched back to my laptop again, because it was just easier to use, there were no limits, and honestly, it weighed about the same in the end. Months passed, the iPad sat in a drawer for around a year, and I kinda didn't really like it, it felt like a chore to use. Then 2018, I remember it very clearly, sitting in the print shop around a bunch of other students were all watching the keynote for the iPad and the MacBook Air, and Apple finally dropped the new 2018 redesigned iPad Pro. Super thin bezels, new 11 inch model alongside the 12.9 inch model, 120 hz beautiful display, Face ID, USB-C, magnetic Apple Pencil, upgraded smart keyboard, and I bought it the second it went live on the Apple Store. And this was kind of an important turning point for me in my life. At this point, I was just moving to Toronto, I was a full-time student and YouTuber, I needed a device that actually made sense for my daily work, and this became the one. I started out by using this tablet for taking notes in lecture classes, and that was a killer use case for me. No more pens or pencils and messy notebooks, I did all my notes on the iPad. Then for my design and advertising classes, it was the perfect tablet to plan out ideas, draw rough concepts, work on daily schedules, and when I wasn't at school, use this for YouTube video planning, rough storyboarding, and actually making videos about this tablet and my experience using it. It really became a device that was part of my daily life in so many ways. Fast forward to the wonderful summer of 2019, we saw the release of the iPadOS 13 beta. This was the update that certified the iPad as honestly my favorite device. The iPad already had the killer hardware and accessories, but now a killer software experience with widgets, more USB-C support, updated multitasking, a better files app, mouse or trackpad support, sidecar, and so much more. Also by this time, there are plenty of apps that finally took advantage of the iPad Pro, and now with cursor support, it meant that video editing apps like LumaFusion and design apps like Affinity Photo became actually much more useful, and great alternatives to the Pro desktop apps like Photoshop and Final Cut. 
And with updates to all of Apple's iWork apps, I did a lot of my essay typing and keynote presentation designs all on the iPad. And throughout the year and well into the fall, I started to see the real potential of the iPad and started to hate my MacBook Pro more and more. You see, the iPad Pro was this magical device and the MacBook Pro kind of felt a bit stale at the time. Then 2020 rolled around and everything kind of changed. From using the iPad every day at school, coffee shops, and outside, to being stuck inside, not leaving the house as the world fell into chaos and uncertainty. Then the 2020 iPad Pro dropped, which was not a massive update, but I bought it because I was still curious to see what changes actually came to the iPad from the previous version. Also, I bought the silver one. Then the Magic Keyboard was released, and similar to some of the big software updates as well as the redesign of the iPad Pro, the Magic Keyboard was the next big evolution for the iPad. The iPad transformed and grew up. From the simple smart keyboard to the fully featured Magic Keyboard, this was a game changer. And while this case is still crazy expensive, it does make it clear that Apple wants people to use the iPad for more than just watching Netflix or YouTube. It can be a serious computer replacement and more. In being stuck at home pretty much every single day throughout the spring and summer of 2020, I started to experiment with the iPad more and more every single day. I even challenged myself to fully take the leap and go all in on the iPad Pro and Magic Keyboard. It was the first time for me when I went full the iPad Pro and got over whatever fear it was of committing to the iPad and actually just did it. And while today the iPad Pro isn't my sole device, I do about 90% of all my daily work and tasks on the new M1 iPad Pro. Now of course, if I'm being honest, the new M1 iPad Pro and iPadOS 15 Beta are not the updates we all kind of were hoping for. But still, there are some really nice changes, like multitasking has gotten a huge update to actually make it easier and better to use. Quick Note has been incredibly useful. Having widgets on the home screen, like the Files app for example, are quite useful, and things just feel faster and more refined all around. And while it's taking a while, iPad apps are slowly getting updated to actually support the new M1 processor. With performance enhancements, new Apple Silicon specific features, we're finally seeing the potential of the new M1 iPad slowly but surely. From work to entertainment to art and everything else, over five years later, the iPad went from being left in a drawer unused and something I didn't even want to pick up, to something I can't put down today. Something I use for almost all of my daily work. Okay, so if I said the iPad Pro changed my life, that would be kind of a weird statement, but it's a little bit true. The iPad set me on a path of making tech videos about things I love. It helped me get through school and assignments and enjoy doing them. It helped me build my business and helped me realize how much I truly love technology, especially tech that feels as human as the iPad Pro. And the M1 iPad Pro and iPadOS 15 are not the biggest updates ever, everybody knows it, I just mentioned it, but for many people, this will be their very first iPad. And knowing all the things I've been able to do on my various iPad Pros over the last few years, thinking about what people are going to do with this device today, tomorrow, and well into the future is pretty exciting. This video was sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with classes about all the creative skills you may have been interested in learning. Maybe you want to learn about photography, illustration, web design, animation, cooking, video editing, well, it's all on Skillshare and so much more. And it's all taught by creative professionals with engaging, entertaining classes and real projects you can actually practice the skills that you've learned. And this is a platform created specifically for learning, so there's no ads, and there's new classes dropping all the time. And there are plenty of incredible classes like this one from Rich Armstrong, all about abstract and organic iPad doodling. If you've been wanting to start creating art on your iPad, this class is a great way to dive in. It's relaxing, it's fun, it's enjoyable. This class is amazing, and I've learned quite a bit. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description get a one month free trial of Skillshare Premium, so you can explore your creativity today. Huge thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So this has been my long term experience with the iPad Pro over the last five years. Various generations, various software updates, new accessories, it's been quite a journey. I want to hear your thoughts on the iPad Pro and what you personally use yours for if you have one in the comments down below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe, and thank you for watching.